Geographically speaking, the Oceania region is one of IUCN's largest programs. Conserving biodiversity, protecting and managing Oceania's diverse ecosystems that range from coral reefs and mangroves to mountains and inland deserts is key to improving livelihoods and reducing poverty and vulnerability of the region's population. One of the key projects overseen by IUCN in this region is their energy program. Energising the Pacific Islands using low carbon, clean and energy efficient power sources is a great challenge. Part of this program has been to install new and upgrade existing solar power systems in schools and health clinics on the islands of Malo and Santo in Vanuatu. Santo is one of the 83 islands in Vanuatu and like the rest of the country is made up of mainly small rural villages. Most have no electricity, sewerage or water supplies. With over 120 distinct languages and home to incredibly diverse cultures, Vanuatu certainly has some unique challenges for IUCN. Using solar, we save a lot of money that we spend on fuel and we spend it on repairing the schools and also buying school materials. At the moment, we are using the solar for a few lights around, but um, in the future, we want to go 100% solar. At Narango School and Village, which is only 40 minutes away from Luganville, the main town on Santo, we were surprised to find some of the children had never seen a white man before, much to their amusement. The solar system was installed in August 2010 and uh, presently we don't have any generator or any other lighting system in the school so the school has been very fortunate to have this uh, solar system. The children use it for study at night and the community use it uh, during uh, school fundraisings to run uh, videos and uh, sound system. Uh, if we don't have a solar system then uh, the next uh, alternative is to buy a generator, it would cost the school a lot of money to run a generator. Natawa Centre School has around 176 students from year one to year eight. They don't have a generator for the power, so only use solar for the lights inside the dorms and also inside the classrooms for study at night. And the staff are using the solar lights to do their work in their houses. If the solar system was larger in many of the schools, then inverters could be used to run machines like photocopiers and printers. Our solar power system uh, runs the two classrooms, uh, one office and uh, also a staff room. But it's not uh, working for five years and last year uh, they have to maintain that and uh, the kids are using them in the classroom. Uh, we also had uh, boarders for students who live in school and they live inside the dormitories where the solar uh, power also su supplies or generates light into the uh, dormitories. We need to expand the solar system for next year because we need a, re a refrigerator for the boarders inside the dining hall. Using solar is good because uh, it reduces uh, pollution and also um, inside the classroom we also teach that to the children that it is good to the environment because it's cheap and it is uh, renewable. Hog Harbour Health Clinic relies on solar power to provide light in their delivery room, ward and supply rooms in the recently expanded site. With an unreliable generator and rising fuel costs, solar power is their only real option. Port Orly Village has a community generator that is run using biofuel produced from the surrounding coconut plantations. This generator only runs for a few hours in the evening. The system requires constant upkeeping and is prone to breakdowns. With close to 200 babies born here every year in the Port Orly Health Clinic, IUCN is playing a major role in the health and well-being of both mother and child by providing light for nighttime deliveries and providing power via inverters to specialised healthcare machinery.
These relatively basic solar power systems supplied by IUCN are making a tremendous difference to the education of so many children in schools and to the health and well-being of those living in remote villages.